but <clears throat> we, uh, we've been in chapter 1 in the book of Luke, and um, we've been talking about Elizabeth, and we've been talking about her husband, Elizabeth's husband, and the birth of John the Baptist. And the, the thing that I want to reiterate to you guys again is this. There's a lot of times, guys, when we read the Bible and we read about a story, a situation in the Bible, and I think we often kind of feel like, wow, that was incredible. Why doesn't anything like that ever happen to me? And, and the reality is, guys, God is doing and continue, continually does things in our lives that really when it comes right down to it is not a whole lot different than, than these things. And, and the question is, is when God comes in and does these things, what are you going to do? How are you going to respond? I'll tell you another thing. Um, we may be talking an awful lot about being in community together, but we're also going to be talking an awful lot about giving praise and worshiping together because th that that also is something that is so huge and and, and and it affects us it changes us you know things happen when we worship god and and we praise god but i think on sunday mornings you guys should be uh able to come in to to, to church uh, walking into this building with a mental list or maybe even a physical list. In fact, I would love it. I, I, that would be so cool. Pastor Jeff, I brought my, my list today, my physical list. Here it is of things that I wrote down that I just want to worship God for, things that he's done in my life over this last week. That would be huge. Would that be something that you would consider doing, something that you would consider uh, committing to doing? Because I think what happens is, is we do, we come into church and we're like, okay, God, I'm here, you know, work your stuff on me and that, that sort of thing. And, and, and God is moving and he's doing different things, but we haven't even really thought about the stuff that he's been doing in our lives that will help. It's kind of like kindling. Or, or, or um, you know, you're not supposed to put gasoline on the fire. You're supposed to use kerosene or, or whatever else. But guys, seriously, th th those things will get us to that place where we need it to be. Why, why do we have church? Why did God put us in community together with this in this this institution called the church? It's so that we we can live lives more fulfilled so so that we can get through life and learn things you know that we need to learn it together as a church more easily you do these kinds of things when you leave um, our church services you will be able to go out into the world and you will have more success because that's what we want that's why god has called us together as a church because we know, he knows that we will be more successful together as a community, as a church, as a body of believers than going at it alone. We have God move in our life. We write it down. We remember it. And then the next time, you know, something happens and we find ourselves kind of at, at a place where we could kind of you know, go this way or, or, or go that way or begin to doubt or begin to struggle. We remember those things that we've written down. You know, I'm visual and probably number one. And then secondly, if I write it down, I do well. You know, um, I don't say Caitlin's name enough. And often, even when I'm praying, I, I, I'm referring to you guys, right? praying for her and that sort of thing but when i write it down that seems to be when when it gets solidified in my mind write the things down that god's doing in your life and cheryl when the next really rocky road comes you can stand up and you can say no there you go devil he's done it this time that time that time and that time and you know what he's going to do it again and you might as well just go take a take a flying leap, right? Seriously, that's helpful, isn't it? And when we share those things, you know, with with one another, it is so 
helpful to hear somebody else sharing, talking about different things. It helps us as well. So we have a, a, a couple here, uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah, who have an experience. And it's quite the experience, isn't it? And the thing of it is, is it got written down, believe you me. Now, whether they wrote it down or somebody else wrote it down, now I don't know, you know how well back in Jesus' day people could write. It's not like they had paper, parchment, or whatever else, or computers where they could just type things up. But this thing got recorded. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors, her relatives heard all that the Lord had done, how the Lord had shown her great favor, great mercy, and they shared in her joy. Now, this is kind of interesting because if you go back and if you look, you will see that, that Zachariah and Elizabeth kind of went a little bit into seclusion a little bit. You know, I'm not sure why, but, but it just kind of happened that way. And yet when it was time for her to, 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 to give birth to the son, all the neighbors, all the relatives, they heard, they heard, you know, what was going on. That's right. I heard she was pregnant. She's getting ready to have that child. That's amazing. And they, they, they celebrated how God had mercy and, and, and they shared in, in, in the joy. After the baby was born on the eighth day, everyone say the eighth day. On the eighth day, they came to, to circumcise the child, this baby. And they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. Now, I'm going to stop there, and I'm not even going to complete that thought, because I do want to go back, and I want to I say something. Why the eighth day? Who can tell me why the eighth day? What were the, excuse me, um, cold barbecue. Um, on the eighth day, what, what were they going to do with this baby? They're going to circumcise. Why on the eighth day? Who can give me a very basic, simple answer? You all want to know what the answer is? Well, it's the beginning of the second week. Yeah, we can observe that. But it was the eighth day because the Bible said so. On the eighth day, go have your boys circumcised. So it said that in the Old Testament. Black and white or parchment or whatever, you know. It said that. I just find this very, very interesting. Because the fact is, is, you know, that was recorded a couple of thousand years before the time of Jesus. Okay? This is part of the Levitical law that you read about in the book of Leviticus, in those first five books of the Old Testament, about having your, your sons circumcised. And yet it says, have your sons circumcised on the eighth day. Guys, do you think that, that um, back, you know, 3,000, you know, 4,000 years ago, they had all the, the, the medical knowledge and wonders that we have today? Nope. Do you know that, you know, 100 years ago or whatever, doctors came to the realization that if you're going to have your son circumcised, there's an opportune time to have that done where it's the least evasive and, and it's the most healthy and, and it promotes the most healing and everything after that little procedure is done. And do you want to know when that, that, that optimum time is? On the eighth day on the eighth day. Now, you may sit there and you think, okay, well, big whoop. Go home and Google it and read some of the articles because it really is pretty mind-bending. And I think it's just mind-bending that God knew it all along. God knew it all along, right? And, uh, and yet, you know, it took a long time for people to say, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. It's the eighth day. Hmm, go figure, right? Pretty cool. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name the baby after his father, Zachariah. But his mom, his mom spoke up and said, no, we're not going to name him Zachariah. We're going to call him John. And everybody was like, John? Who's John? You know, you don't have any Johns in your family. Well, why you're, you're supposed to name your sons usually after the father, you know, who's John or whatever else. There is no one among your relatives who have that name. 
Then they made signs to the father. Why were they making signs to Zach, uh, Zachariah? Why were they making signs to him? He couldn't talk. The thing of it is, is he could hear, you know, Zachariah. Dude, I, I, I can't speak. I can hear, you know, I don't know. But it's kind of funny, right? But they're, they're making signs, you know, uh, to the father to find out what the father would want to name the son, you know, this child. He asked for a writing tablet, so they, there had, had been some ways at least to write some things down. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. And I love the next word there. Do you all see what it says right there in verse 64? The next word, is it too small? It says, immediately. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosened or freed, but the... The Greek is loose, and I like that word. It was loosened. He had this stiff tongue that couldn't make, you know, couldn't get in the right form to, to make the, the sounds or whatever else. And, uh, and he began to speak, praising God. And all of the neighbors were filled with awe. It had been, I don't know, eight months, you know, since he had been able to speak. And then suddenly, after he writes it down, because the angel told him what to name the, the, the boy as well, right? Pretty cool, isn't it? And you can make whatever parallels that you want to with this. But what I'm just simply going to say to you is this. God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. He has instructions for our lives. He has things that, that he would have us do. And, and I tell you, often in this world we feel handicapped, shackled and yet when we're in obedience with him and we really truly truly when it's just absolutely our heart's desire to follow him he loosens those chains and he accomplishes what it is that he wants to accomplish if we seek to be faithful and obedient to him he, he will do unbelievable things suddenly Zachariah is able to, to speak again. And he just starts praising God and all the story. I, I, I'm sure he wrote things like pictures. Maybe he got little tablets. He tried to write things down. Paper wasn't easy to come by back then. And I'm sure that evening, Zachariah probably went into this like five hour long description of what took place. You remember in the temple when that angel showed up? He's like, finally, I can tell you guys. You know, I, I am sure that he went to Elizabeth and said, ah, I, I, I wanted so desperately to tell you all of this, and now I, I get the chance to, to describe it all. That's pretty cool, right? And so this takes place. Uh, throughout the, the hill country of Judea, everybody was talking about this. You know how Zachariah was like, Quiet said he couldn't speak, like we thought maybe he had had a stroke or something. Dude, he didn't have a stroke. Um, God, like, did something. He couldn't talk. And as soon as he, he wrote down his name's going to be John, suddenly God just went bloop, and he just started testifying up a storm. Can you imagine the stories? Those would be some pretty cool stories. Imagine how many times that would get shared and liked and thumbs up and everything else like that on, on Facebook. And people began to ask because of this, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand is, is surely upon him. And the Lord's hand was absolutely surely upon him. Guys, we may, we again, we may sit there and think, wow, that's phenomenal. Wow, if the Lord did something like that in my life, I... I, w I would never even come close to ever sinning again, you know? <laughs> and, 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 and I think we all think that, don't we? I mean, that makes sense. I mean, that would be kind of right up there with the holy calligraphy in the sky, you know, God taking his finger and, and turning the clouds either like, I, I, in my mind, I always kind of imagine either like a deep purple, because we've seen when the clouds are purple, right? Or like a deep red. But perfectly blue, you know, crystal clear blue behind it. I am God. I am here. Fear me. 
don't make me come down there, <laughs> you know, right? I mean, that would cause us to shudder a little bit, right? This, I am sure, I have no doubt, caused them to shudder. And we can sit there and we can think all the time, wow, if the Lord did something like that, then I would, you know, blah, 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 blah. As I am telling you, the Lord does this stuff in, 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 in my life and in Amy's life all the time. Now, is it so grandiose? Not, maybe not so grandiose. Guys, I, I remember going to the doctor. <sighs> absolutely convinced that I had cancer. And the bad cancer. And you and I were talking about it because I know you were like, oh, I got my own problems. I'm like, yeah, I got some of my problems going on as well. And... Um, just convinced, well, I guess I'm going to be taking an early exit out of this world. I remember thinking those thoughts, you know, wanted to have faith, you know, I knew, I know, I read all those same books that they were reading, and all those same verses, all that same stuff, but the thing of it is, you know, we, we get pretty flesh in the week, and we tend to forget. We just tend to forget. The doctor came, and he said to me, he said, Jeff, you don't have cancer. You, you, you don't have any of this stuff. You've got X, Y, and Z. And Amy, Amy was there. If you can imagine, I just became a blubbering, crying idiot. I told him, I said, we're going out to St. Elmo's. What time do you want us to come back and pick you up? We're celebrating. Literally said that to him. Literally said that to him. God is good. And he is good all the time. And you want to know, even if it was cancer, even if it was cancer, God would accomplish ten times more for the good than the bad of the one-time cancer. And we write these things down. At the very least, we share them with one another so that Cheryl can come back to me and say, Jeff, don't you remember just last year what the Lord did for you? Don't you, don't you remember that? Why would you question him now? He's, he's going to be there with you. Even if, even if it is bad. Guys, he does things in our lives all the time. We would do well to remember them. I told you that Amy and I were, well, actually I didn't tell you because I was afraid you wouldn't come to church. But Amy and I, were, were, we, we took some vacation time. And we went down to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, to hang out with Bethany, our daughter Bethany, and the son-in-law, um, Mason. What's your name, Amy? <laughs> and um, to hang out with them and all that stuff. Got to play golf with Mason. We ate so much good food. It was unreal. Even saw a Circus Olay show. It was, mag it was, it was there in Atlanta. I was like, I was, oh, I was so, it was so much fun. I had such a good time, right? The name of the, 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 the church the name of the church where Mason serves, he's doing this two-year internship. You know what it's called. Don't say it. Any of the rest of you, did any of you catch what it's called, the name of the church? I love the name. I love the name. Do you remember the name of it? Did you forget? I'm going to say it, and then I want somebody to immediately tell me the reference, the biblical reference. Twelve stone. What's the reference? You're not going to get cookies from Amy. Twelve stones. When the Israelites crossed the, uh, the river and the Pharaoh was behind them and everything else and God caused the river to go whoosh and stuff like that. By the way, how many tribes are there of Israel? Oh, interesting. So Moses said, go and get a big stone, each of you. Each of you, go get a big stone, one for each of the tribes. I want you to come, and I want you to put it right here by the wall. I'm, I'm, I am. I'm going to get emotional about that. Because <laughs> it's just so right. It's so correct. It is so good. Each of you, get a stone, a big old stone. Set it on the ground. Stack them up in a big old heap. And when any of your kids or anybody walks by, and they say, what's up with the stone? Um, 12 tribes of Israel were given their freedom from Pharaoh. 
It was the most unbelievable thing he could ever imagine. And when we crossed the, the, the water, God allowed the water just to come up in a heap on both sides. And we walked across on the high land. And when the enemy came after us, God allowed that water just whoosh. And these 12 stones are a constant reminder. Guys, we need to have those constant reminders. If you're going to do well, make sure you have places that you can go to remember how good God has been to you so that you can know that God will continue to be good to you. Amen, church? Any comments there? Anything? Oh, this passage and the next passage, I also just really, really love. So this is what would it be? Three or four months later, if we do our math, right? Because Elizabeth was, uh, was, was pregnant before Mary was pregnant. About three or four months, I think. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named what? Jesus. So we're talking about Jesus' birth. We just got done talking about John the Baptist's birth. Now we're talking about Jesus' birth. On the eighth day getting circumcised interestingly enough they, uh, they they didn't name him immediately even though they knew the name that they oh by the way do you know what john means the name john so why did they name him john anyone know have you ever looked it up john's name not in the greek but in the hebrew because that was the language that that the israelites spoke until nebuchadnezzar came and wiped him out and made him learn greek so in the Hebrew, it means God is gracious. So John's message was repent, repent, repent. This, this message of, of, you know, if you repent, God's going to do all these wonderful things, you know. So um, God is gracious. Um, Jesus, here we go, Jesus. And by the way, you all know that Jesus, um, you know, correctly translated into Hebrew is um, Joshua. You all know that, right? Or Yahshua. Yeah, depending on, on how you want to, how, how deep you want to try to get in with your accent with the Hebrew. Um, a lot of people don't know that. You can, you can, uh, we can have that conversation more a little bit later if you would like to. On the eighth day when it was time for Jesus to be, be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name that the angel had given him, given Jesus before he was conceived. You know why I love this? I love this verse because there's a lot of people that just say, and you hear this all the time, especially by professors, because they will pick and choose. They, 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 they will tell you a half-truth, just like the devil, because quite frankly, I think a lot of these guys are, you know, whether they even realize it or not, they're, they're working for the devil, you know, whether they even know it or not. A lot of professionals will sit there and say, well, the Greek word for virgin is actually just a young woman. Okay, well, you know what? We have words that have two different meanings as well, right? Somebody give me an example of a word that has two different meanings. Amy, you're smarter than me. There, there and there. Actually, there's three there's, isn't there? So uh, there you go. Ha, ah, you like that? You all missed it. There you go. Okay, so uh, anyway, um, yes, the word virgin can mean a young woman. But it can also mean one who has, you know, not, you know, been with a man. There you go. That's a good way of saying it, isn't it? Not been with a man. All right. Well, she she was just a young woman, you see. And 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 but you know, okay. First of all, everyone go. Err. Okay. Before he was conceived. He was named Jesus, the name that the angel had given the, the Messiah, the Christ, before he was conceived. How was he conceived? Through the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. Does the Bible also say in there that Mary and Joseph did not have union, did not have you know, relations uh, with each other until well after Jesus was born. The Bible says that. It says that. So I, I just want to point that out to you, okay? 
because the devil might want to try to get in your head and say, oh, you know what, she was actually just a young woman, and, you know, and, and the guy says that, and Ted Turner on his show, The Real Story of Jesus, don't ever watch a Ted Turner, you know, Bible thing, because 80% of it's going to be heresy and stuff as well. I hope you all know that. Ted Turner's not a Christian. He's a Baha'i, and uh, he's so full of malarkey, it's not even funny. In fact, I think he very, very intentionally hires things, and he makes these movies just to, to throw people more into confusion than, than to be helpful. Anyway, um, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. What does the word mean? What does this phrase mean? Consecrated to the Lord. What does the word consecrate mean? What's being described here? Do you know? Does anyone know? So I'll give you a hint. This, you know, Jesus was Joseph and Mary's first fruits, right? First fruits. What are we to do with our first fruits? We give it to the Lord. You give it to the Lord. Um, Old Testament, Samuel. I wasn't sure if I was going to get there, but I got there. Samuel. Wasn't able to have a baby. Wasn't able to have a baby. Wasn't able to have a baby. Suddenly she has a baby. Samuel. What does she do? She quite literally gives him to the Lord. Here you go. He's going to serve in the temple, and he's going to serve the Lord all, all his days. Really? Yep. Cool. Thanks. You know? And that's really kind of how it was, right? This is the first fruits. So Jesus was given over to the Lord in service to the Lord, to, to honor the Lord, all of those kinds of things. Is, it, is, it, is there sim symbolism that's taking place here and that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely there is, right? Absolutely there is. But, you know, I, I, I do think it's also worth saying we are to give our first fruits across the board. Across the board, not what's left over, but the first fruits of anything and everything. Who can give me an example of what an, uh, a f giving a first fruit to the Lord might entail? A first what to the Lord? First what? Anybody want to? You know what I'm kind of asking and stuff? What's that? A tithe. Okay. So, hey, I make money, right? If I make money and, and the Lord has given me the ability to, to make the money, then I should give my first first fruits to the Lord. In fact, there's a word that's used, well, what, 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 what consecrates a, a, a first fruit of, of income, you know, to be given to the Lord? A, a tithe. And the word tithe, what does the word tithe mean? Anybody know that word? A tenth. Tithe and tenth, the same thing. So you give a, a, a tenth. Whoa, that's all. Okay, well, we're not going to go there. What else? What else? How else? What other first fruit should you give uh, to the Lord. We talk about it all the time. Your what? Your time. So we just did our treasure. We're going to give a tenth of our treasure. I should give a tenth of my time. How many hours, Amy, are in a week? I'll make it easier. How many waking hours are there in a week? We won't count the sleeping hours. So the waking, so you have 14 times 7, so that's going to be 70 plus 24, 7, 8, 9, 98. Did I do my, my math right? 98. You like my math? That was Mrs. Riley math. Good old Mrs. Riley. So did I say 98? Is that what I said? So 98 hours. Wow. A tenth. A tenth. What's a, what's a tenth of our time? Well, just waking hours, not sleeping hours, just waking hours. What's a tenth of 98? That's almost 10 hours. And I, I'm going to like give that over to the Lord? You mean like to volunteer, to help out, to mow, to cut, to trim, to cook, to do dishes, to whatever, all of those kinds of things? First fruit? No, I don't know. Maybe, that, maybe the word tithe or tenth doesn't pertain to that. But I think it definitely does pertain to time. We give them the, the, the time. So we talked about treasure, time. What else? What else? Is there another key that we could use? Yeah, your talents. Okay, well, what, what does that look like? Well, you know, 
talent, you know, often referred to money, but talent can also mean like, well, what are you good at? What are your gifted areas? What are you good at? I like to sew. I'm good at sewing. I like making uh, quilts and uh, those kinds of things. Well, very, very cool. I'll tell you what, I would like for you to make blankets. Um, you can give those blankets out to these moms after they have a baby and they can kind of commemorate it and everything else. Maybe you could give it to a, an older person. I still have a, a, a Sunday was cold at my house after church. Was it cold at your house after church on Sunday? It was my house. And so Amy saw me shivering on the couch and she went over and she pulled out. Amy, what did you pull out of the little little box over there? My Colts blanket. Myrna Burden was her name. John and Myrna, they're both in heaven today. They had a ministry up in Elkhart. They would give away, and these weren't small. This was, they were, they're about this tall and that wide from here to the floor. And, and it would be a homemade quilt. It had Indianapolis Colts print on the back and it had blue and white stripes. And it is one of my most treasured possessions in the house. Because she gave that to me out of absolute love. And every time, re, every single time I think of them, I think of them, and I kind of get giddy. Like, and she's in heaven. <laughs> That's really cool. In fact, John finally got there, too. Um, I won't tell you about the time when John, we, we, we took a field trip down from Elkhart, and um, we're walking across the uh, infield to, the, uh, to turn one to watch qualifying for the Indianapolis 500. You know, on a Saturday, we took a field trip, and John pops three nitros because he's having a heart things. And I'm thinking he's, he's, and I'm like, what are you doing? So I'm thinking nitros. And I'm like, oh, my land, he's going to die right here and stuff like that. But he, 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 he calmed down, settled down. And the coolest thing of it is, is the guy in the golf cart saw what was going on, and we got a free trip to turn one. So those, those, whatever those gifts are. Do y'all think that um, Melody, you know, you know how I, I, I know Melody's name is Melody, right? Because she sings like a melody. Uh, how many of y'all thought that she did a nice job on that song on Sunday? I only heard it a million times, okay? Um, and you're right. She, she's very talented like that. She, she, you know, we went down to Nashville, Tennessee, and we, we went into, a, 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 you know, 20 different little honky-tonk places to listen to the country music while we were down there. There's a lot of talent down there. I mean a lot of talent, like unbelievable talent. And the thing of it is, is Melody could go and, and use that talent in a million different ways. She's using it to the Lord. You're going to hear a song in three weeks by a Christian um, country musician named Zach, it's not Brown, what's his last name, Amy? Williams. Zach Williams. And um, when you hear that that new song, you're going to go, you've listened to it, I'm assuming, at least once. Have you listened to it? Is that not like, it's like, wow, that guy has a talent. He's not making nearly the money that, that, that he would be making if he just wrote secular songs about getting, you know, loaded up with beer and sleeping with a girl under the stars in the back of his pickup truck and that sort of thing, right? And yet Zach says, you know what, I don't need that money. I'm going to worship the Lord, and I'm going to write really, really good songs for the Lord. And the uh, thing of it is, is he'll, I'll go pay money to go see him in concert and that sort of thing. That sort of thing. So, um, yeah. Guys, there's a lot of good stuff we've talked about tonight. Here's what I would suggest. The Pacers are playing tonight. Dwayne's going to go home and turn on the Pacers. That's all right. But tonight or tomorrow, go back and reread these. Read, you know, the book of Luke, you know, um, the birth of John the Baptist, the birth of Jesus. Just go back and reread them. Make a couple of notes of the things that stand out in your mind that we've talked about tonight. One thing I definitely want you to do. Next time God does something in your life, whether it's a 10 on the wow factor or it's just a 3, write it down. Put it to memory. Put it in your computer and tell your Outlook on your calendar on Outlook to remind you to go back and read what you wrote down a year later. And let that just work on you.
and minister to you. Y'all hear me? Yeah, please. so funny that, that, that is God definitely does that absolutely so so interesting how he does that for sure guys listen thank you for coming and being in community today I needed that I needed you guys hopefully you guys needed it as well and it's good do me a favor there's a whole lot of people that call open door church their church that need to be closer and more in community they need people to befriend them Amy and I can't befriend everybody. We can't. We can't. There are people out there that are lonely. There are people out there that, that are, are kind of missing out. There are people out there uh, over the course of the past 15 years who have come to this church and did not find the kind of community that they were hoping for and ended up leaving in hopes of finding it somewhere else. Let's make sure that we're in community well together with one another, okay? Let me pray with you. We'll be dismissed. I know I kept you guys a couple minutes late. Let's not get too weird about it. It happens, right? Father, thank you for our night tonight. The food was amazing, both physical and spiritual. Thank you, Lord, for feeding us, for reminding us, for taking care of us. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right. God bless you guys. Thanks again, everyone watching online.